advised. Hey everyone, <laughs> welcome back to Board Games Unlocked. And Devin and I are continuing our series for Madara. Madara. All right, so to recap, recap. Um, for us, yeah, we are we just got through kind of getting our ass kicked, uh, heading down into this dungeon, uh, based off what uh, Zeke's uncle was was talking about. So we are investigating that. Right. So we were like chilling out. Hanging with his Went uncle. Went to a party after our graduation. <clears throat> uh-huh. Yep. Got super drunk. Yep, yep. Yep, I chain smoked like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And Nightingale's like, come on! I hate my dad! <laughs> and uh, that was that was pretty much that. Uh, so we kind of have gone through, seems to be kind of our big first big dungeon. Because he didn't want her to join. The guard. The guard that yep. guards her. Yep, and uh, yep, we found out, yeah, that uh, Rook is her guard. Hmm. Um, and Remy's her friend, and Zeke's her lover. So main character over here, we're just side, see. we're cannon fodder. Yeah. As long as she doesn't die. Uh, anyway, so we are now into the gloom. As you go deeper into the white vault, you are greeted by a pack of cave sickles. You draw your weapons, <laughs> clunk, and prepare to fight when a rumbling causes you to pause. Further in the distance, something lumbers around a crumbling pillar. An Earth Loa emerges and stumbles towards you. With a quick glance to your comrades, you commit to the fight. So long as you can defeat these cave sickles before the horrible rock creature gets too close, you should be fine. Yeah, we should be fine. So, uh, yeah, our win condition is an adventure ends their turn on the uh, the exit. Okay. The blue exit. We lose if all adventurers are defeated. Uh, but if we defeat the Earth Loa, we get... An achievement, Ooh. which is called not quite unkillable. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, let's. We gotta have the achievement, so. I know, right? Otherwise, what's the point? Exactly. How uh, many hit points does it have? 20. 20 hit points, 8 defense, 4 movement, 5 armor. Its combat dice are 2 teal. <laughs> which is uh, uh, one of the high. Uh, it's not one of the highest, it's actually kind of mid tier. But, um, it is hulking. So it has, yeah, the, uh, hulking is figures cannot be moved, uh, figure cannot be moved by opposing abilities or currents for any reason. Mm, so we can't throw him in a hole. Nope. Uh, all right, so yeah, imposing. He has hulking. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, I mean, he basically, uh, if there if there is any other ally within uh, sphere of influence without uh, barrier, he gives them barrier. Uh, so barrier is probably not good. It's probably yeah. It's probably it's not good for them or for us. Uh, so I'd have to look through those. It might be in one of those static things um, here. Uh, or no, probably in here. But barrier, let's see, is not there. It is passive oh. plus one armor. Oh, okay, yep. So he just gives people barriers, yeah, and then he basically is going to continue down, and otherwise he'll just move. But let's learn a little bit about the Earth Loa. Mineral menaces. For a long time, Loas were thought to be spirits trapped in special, uh, speci specially crafted gems, relics of a long dead civilization. Gems known to contain Loas were very rare, and it was assumed that the magic used to capture Loa and Crystal had been lost. Once the recolonization of Elenia began in earnest, explorers soon began encountering Loas in the wild. These sentient crystalline beings were determined to be a species unto themselves, with each loa acting as an individual. Every loa has a, pre a preferred medium it uses to create a body. When dormant, a loa appears to be a semi-precious gem. Loa crystals span a wide range of colors, hues, and sheens. If a loa feels threatened or wants to move somewhere else, it can gather materials of its favorite, <coughs> favorite element around itself to create a body. Earth loas are one of the common types adventurers encounter next to their kindred, the water loa. They reside in forests, caves, and anywhere else with easy access to earth and stone. They tend to keep to unsettled areas, and interactions with humans often turn violent. They seem to get uh, sustenance simply by being in contact with the ground, and so far have never been seen feeding. When they gather earth to form a body, they create a humanoid shape, although it is usually rough and asymmetrical. Earth loas only form a body if they feel threatened, and when they do, it is almost always very large. Earth loas fight with brute force, smashing opponents with rocky club-like arms. While these creatures won't actively chase down and kill humans, they are spooked easily. Their small size, while dormant, makes them hard to notice until an adventurer unwittingly stumbles upon them. Oops. Their physical forms are very tough and resistant to attacks with most conventional weapons. Caravans traveled through lands known to be inhabited by Earthloas make sure to bring along a mage to kill or subdue these creatures. Mage! 
Or Lois have shown surprising intellect, some reportedly hiding as jewelry for years until they perceive a threat. This usually leads to the death of the owner hmm. or the Loa. Okay, so uh, the Earth Loa is actually going first. Oh, so. lovely. He has Hulking. Is there an ally within Sphere of Influence? One, two, three. There is. So give that one. Uh, the barrier. Barrier. Boom. Uh, oh, and also for an update, uh, Nightingale has 11 health. Uh, Zeke has 16. Remy has four. Just, and Root. Uh, Root and Rook has uh, 13. I just had it. I saw it through the bag, and now I can't. And now it's gone. There's only one in the entire, probably, <laughs> in that entire thing. Now they should have pictures on the back. So yeah, there we go. Cool. So yeah, give it to the blue one, number four. Number four. Yep. So it gives him plus one uh, armor. Hey, yes. so now it has one armor. Yeah. Also, it does also say there's a tip untouchable monsters. So I'm 100 percent certain that we are still in the tutorial, <laughs> if it's still giving us tips. Yep. Not all monsters are created equal. Without the proper items or disciplines, you'll find some creatures are very difficult to kill. Monsters with high armor values like the Earth Lower are best taken care of with spells that deal magic damage, like Gore Shot. If that is impossible, try flanking them with disciplines that overcome armor, such as Follow Through. Lastly, many effects can render highly armored monsters useless, such as Poison or Paralyze. If none of these are options due to your character builds, you can still finish most encounters without killing them. Okay! Which is nice. Uh, that, that's so you option. are our... Probably sole source of damage. Uh, I mean, she could maybe get through, but that's like a really good roll. Really good roll, and probably for chip damage. Mm -hmm. He's not getting through. He's he's versatility, um, and he's quick attacks for not a lot of damage. Yeah. And Rook weirdly also doesn't deal a lot of damage, but he doesn't take a lot either. No, he does not. All right. Anyway, so he does that. Continue down. Is there more than one opponent adjacent? No. Can it move and attack an opponent within reach two? No. Otherwise, move towards the nearest opponent. So it's going to go one, two, three, four. <laughs> like, could you imagine being in the woods and you're like, man, I sure love nature. Oh, that's a pretty rock. Anyway, <laughs> you keep going, then you just hear that. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, fucking! I'll end it. <laughs> you have bow and arrow. Uh, okay, that was his turn. Remy! Remy. Well, you know, she's feeling a little fatigued. She's going to chug some Vitality Juice Box. That little, gets consumed, it right? It does, yeah. yeah. So it's just three health. So that's... So, okay. Go, 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 go. Somewhere. <laughs> All right. So consumables. Yeah, there. You want me to put it on top? Yep. Mm -hmm. Just nervously drink some juice box. <laughs> Okay. Oh, what is that? Guava? Oh my! Ugh. Oh my god! You don't like guava? Guava? What is guava? It guava is a gross. fruit, you it fucking sounds idiot. Gross. Well, you're stupid. You're stupid, because it's gross. Let's see. You've here. never even had it. It's gross, whatever it is. So let's see here. We can go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I. And it's like difficult terrain to move through an ally. Yep. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. But she has just enough movement to get there with a traditional move. So she will. Gonna get up on old purple here. Okay. And That's a guapa fruit, which I've never had by itself. I've only had it in juice boxes. Juice boxes, yes. I don't recall ever a drink that I've had, and I was like, mmm, guava! Well, first of all, it was a quote from American Dad. Uh -huh. Second of all... Same. I don't think I've ever been like, oh my god, that's <laughs> so good! What is that, apple juice? Get that shit away from me. I only drink guava. guava. Oh, there's also a blue, blue loot over there. I love loot. All right. Well, you know, here she is going up there, ready to fucking just hammer at it. So, all right. So I'm attacking. So I'm using these dice, and I have yeah. to reach its target number of eight. Yeah. Okay. For the record, it costs two stamina points to attack. Yes. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I don't. Let's see. Oh, I've reached two. I don't have to be that close. Yeah. <laughs> I choose not to be. Yeah, you have that. Actually, I can. Oh, actually, come on. I'm just so retarded. <laughs> I'm actually going to end over here, so I'm not in everyone else's way. Okay. That, and then I have reached it. All right. That's what I'm doing. I forget. I'm learning. I'm relearning. Okay. Ha! That is, I think, literally the worst roll. It is. That is the worst <laughs> roll <laughs> on these dice. <laughs> Um, well, I can only improve, so reroll. One of these 
dice. You prefer a break attack, you may counter. That's so, only better. So an eight, that's just enough to deal one damage. You got him. I got him. I'll, uh, Oof. I'll add that to your purple. I mean, just, purple. And go, just skinned him. Yep, you kind of stumbled up on the rock. Right. <laughs> there was uh, that that uh, that juice box was spiked a little mm, bit. A little bit. She's like she's like a closet alcoholic. <laughs> like has a flash that she uh, just always. Cool. Ta- I'm just gonna top this off. And it's like it's juice. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I need a little kick. A little, a little bit. I'm fine. <laughs> All right, Rook. Oh, I man, I get to go both. All right. Um, <laughs> you want to try that one more time? I guess. I want to go both. Both. I get I'm going to go both turns. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Hey, look, I'm just right up there. Look at me just go. Nice. Look at me go. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm using hammer and shield. I get two whitey dice. I can empower for free. Yeah, you can. So, I'm going to do that. Here it goes. Oh, also, he's gonna, he's gonna, because he does these for free. He's gonna heal her for six. Okay. So it puts her up to 13. Yep. There's another thing. Six. And then she was kind of low, right? At 11? Uh, yeah. What's her max health? Her max health is, let's see, it's gonna be 12, 13, 40, 15, 16, 17. 17. Right. Okay, so. Okay, so yeah, I will heal her to have max health. Neat. So he gets to do this for free because it's other people. Neat. So that's it. That's, that's all of his healing. He talked us for, off. For the encounter, right? Yep. Okay. So 12. decent roll. 12. So that's already over by four. Um, then So then six. And then eight. And I don't think he does anything with books. So that's going to be eight damage to this thing. I think he kills it. Yeah, that is very he dead. clobbers the purple. Oh yeah, I forgot he only has the one hammer now. Yeah, he's got he's like shielded. He's, yep. Yep. Um, okay. Just splatters it a little bit gets on Remy's face. Oh, <laughs> just let me let me get a little, <laughs> just get a little bit of that. Oh, uh, terrible. We're just like, what the hell? What's wrong with you two? Let me just block the way here for your guys. I know, right? Well, I was thinking about adding in my uh, swapping to my longbow, but. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, but actually, nope, because I'm going to move. And if you need, like, a little pep, I have Bottled Blessing. So at any time, I can heal someone three, re-roll a dice, or gain an SP. For anyone in his sphere of influence at any time. All right. Uh, let's see. Movement of six. Let's go one, two. Exhaust my short sword to move diagonally. Three, yeah. four, five, six. Do it again. Yep. <laughs> ah! Move aside! Naruto running. Ha <laughs> ha! Dude, I flip in the air. Come down! What is that? What and happens? I roll all these dice! Uh, let's see. It's a purple and... I think it is just... Oh, purple and a white. Give it to him. Give it to him, Daddy. Give it to me! Give it to me, Neil! Oh, I also... Actually... Uh, no, I did not have to exhaust that because my... Uh, oh, that's only if I'm ranged. Never mind. Okay. Never mind, but I do can I get multiple dodges. Nice. Ten. And that's enough. And I use two uh, two shields to add two physical damage, and books don't do anything for me, so that'll be twelve total. Twelve total. So he has eight defense. So that's four damage. Four damage. Four. That's a lot of damage. I'm gonna do blade works. Ah! Make another attack. Ah! That's going to be 11. And there's a star that adds a damage. So that's 11. You bisect the beast! <laughs> it's like you cut him up, and then you cut the pieces up in the air, and then you cut him up again, and then it comes out as a nice sashimi. <laughs> just like lands on a plate. Yeah, like the uh, the cats in uh, Monster Hunter. Cats, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. And I'm a chain smoker like those cats as well. Yeah. Did you see the movie? No, you don't see movies. I don't. They had that that scene from the game where the cats do like the cut. Yeah, I heard that, that was the one thing they faithfully recreated. That, it is like, I was like that that they must have taken that straight from the game. Yeah. It was impressive. I was I was like, you know what? That gets an extra point for me, shitty movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you went from a two to a three. <laughs> no, it uh for those kinds of movies because it's always Wes Anderson. Wes. 
yeah, Wes Anderson. I think it's Wes Anderson and his wife. Uh, they they did all the Resident Evils. He just mm-hmm. he likes video games, but he hates faithfully recreating them. In I movies. know. <laughs> is is the actress? Is that his wife? Yes. Oh yeah, because yeah. I'm like, why is she in all these shitty <laughs> video game recreation yeah, movies? I think that's his wife. Um, but out of all of them, it wasn't the worst. Like, it it was watchable. Now, whenever they talked, it was like, oh my god, oh, this is a B movie yeah. right here. <laughs> exactly. But uh, I had fun. You have to go in expecting it to be shit, though. Anyway, so that's dead. Uh, now Nightingale's turn. Now everyone's blocking her way because she does not have... Um, I mean, she doesn't get extra movement. She doesn't get anything. She just has six movements. So let's just go ahead and she will go... She was in the back. Uh, one, two, three, four... Uh, five. I'll spend one to at least get past, past Rook. Okay, so that was her turn. I guess I could. No, nope, yeah. I can't. Can you shoot it? Uh, spell six. With mind bullets? Actually, I can, because that doesn't... Yeah, I can do gore shot on that one. Uh, it's just going to be a spell six. Bing. My casting is purple. So they're... Six. All right, nine. So it's their conviction. So it's going to be white and purple. White. They have to be the nine. That's to be the nine? Yep. They did, by one. Um, well... Oh, wait, my casting upgrade... Could actually be white. Yeah, you gotta roll white. All right, five. Hey. Okay, so five. So that's eleven. So they did fail. That is gonna be two irreducible damage. Ow. Um. I. Oh no. Sorry. Sorry. It's yeah. It's gonna be two magic damage. I will take a damage to. Oh, I have to take two. Two damage to deal. Uh, another two damage. So it'll be four. Four damage to Orange Boy. I just imagine she just like kind of punches into her side and just shoots like a orb ball. <laughs> like, because it's a gore shot. Yeah. Uh, that's literally all I have. Um, and unfortunately, she still has darkness on her from the last fight. So her defense is now down to eight and she cannot dodge. Anyway, so that was that. Okay. Uh, now their Boom. turn. Uh, so that is going to be Cave Sickle 4, this one. Cave Sickle 4. All right, let's go through it. Is there an opponent, Jason? No. Is there an opponent within range 4? No. Can it move and attack an opponent within range 4? Yes. Total movement, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 3. Within range, it'd stop okay, there, yeah. so then 1, oh, 2. Actually, 1, 2, 3, it'd stop here. Okay. They can hit Z. And then it's going to shoot you. It only has one buddy nearby. Yep. So he's just a white and an orange. And he's, he's going to rear up, just like turn his ass to you and just shoot this long spike just headed straight Zeke's way. Oh, that was cocked. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I will dodge. Um, let's see. So it's yeah, a seven, actually, once eight, per nine, turn, 10, 11. Oh, okay. So let's see. Yep, let's go ahead and use my weapon traps because I am melee. I will dodge. And I, uh, for free, uh, with his nimble fighter once per turn, I may re-roll my dodge roll. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, <fuck>. What? <laughs> when making the dodge, I may re-roll my dodge. <laughs> That's a lot of dodge. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I still don't think it matters um, because... I'm just dog shit. What's your what's your little engine do there? What did it do? What do you, what do you mean my engine? Your rock with the glowy symbol on it. Oh, it, I, once per encounter I can make an attack. Oh, okay. Tell you what. Oh, sorry. No, can't <laughs> use his ability if it's the black dice. Yeah, because I add, I add the... Anyway. So, yep. Unfortunately, it puts my defense up to 10. Okay. So, so 11. So, he deals 1. And he's got 2 shields. So, he's going to deal 3 damage to you. Okay. All right. Uh, so I saw on Reddit um, how uh, grasshoppers like they uh, they how they poop. Oh. Um, they have the they have the turd come out and then they kick it, <laughs> kick, kick it out the of their body. That's how I imagine this thing just kind of kick <laughs> just kick that spike out of its ass towards oh, me. Delicious. Basically, it just shot like a whole bunch. I dodged. Or I went to dodge and then just kind of stumbled it's, it's and it slipped. just kind of hit my side. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, this one. 
Oh, right. There's two of them. He's going to do... Uh, all right. Is there an opponent? Jason? No. Within range four. So he's going to make a range four attack. He's going to fucking... Is he going after Zeke again? It, it, Zeke's the closest. Okay. He's going after Zeke. Boo-boo. Oh, and Why that's... am I rolling awesome now? I'm sorry. Uh, I can... Not I mean, do that's anything literally for you. all I can do. Um, uh, nope. Nope. Yep. All right. How much damage is that? Oh, boy. Uh, that's going to be 14. Over my nine, so it's already five. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight. eight damage. Eight damage. That puts me down to five. Fucking shit. Because I did not... I did not think uh, about... Um, about... Yep. All right. That's that. You might have to break out the knives just to clean these guys up. Yep. I mean, that one's al almost dead. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, right. And then... Oh, that's right. He moved to adjacent... Two opponent with the most damage within the movement range. Then he's going to make a melee attack. Yep, that's going to be Zeke again. Yeah. Uh, so this was this was orange guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to move in. Come on, roll shitty, Devin. Yeah, Do you want to roll this one? Sure. Uh, you're the one controlling him, but now. All right. All right. Wow. I think that drops him. Ugh. I can not do anything for you. I can. Um, how much damage is it going to do to you? I was at five. Yeah. So, I don't know. You you have. So to... okay. So that's. That's fifteen over nine. So it's already six. Six. Seven, which is already enough. Seven, eight, nine. <laughs> so it's nine damage. Yeah. And how much health do you have? Five. five six, six, six. Damn, I couldn't. Blessing you. Oh, whoops. Um. Could you dodge? Nope. Nope. Because I don't if have. If you had one SP, could you dodge? Yes. I'll, I could attempt. To I'm going to give you an SP. Well, here's the thing: it's six. It's fifteen over nine. Yeah. So, like, say I, if you roll, even four. if I rolled the four, that that'd be thirteen. Yeah. Which would be three damage. Um. And it's going to add more than two. Yeah. God damn. Okay. Yep. Shit. Yep. Okay, so that's Zeke's just fucking shot to pieces. <laughs> I just like shred that one. It's like this isn't so bad. <laughs> no, it's like <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> Zeke, Zeke, Rook. My smokes. <laughs> My smokes. Light one for me. <laughs> Put it in your mouth and light it. Let me have one more. <laughs> All right, Nightingale. Cool. Rook. Hey. Hey. Remy. Earth Loa. Yeah, all of them. Okay, all right. That's fair. That's a good... Okay. Hey, Nightingale gets to go do something. Okay. Okay. So... Clean up Orange. He's already taken a lot of damage. Now that's a lot of damage. Two more, two more damage, and he's done for. Oh, okay. Then, uh... Yeah, she'll do a... That looks an exhaust. She will gore shot. And... Six plus six, so twelve. Nice. And its conviction is a white and a purple. Ooh, eleven. Just enough. That was fucking close. Two damage to it. Dead. <laughs> Blast its head off. Ooh, that gives me a thing, right? It does. Treasure. Nine. All right, sweet. And so that was... That was not even her action. So uh, let's go... So is this wear off or is this staying? Because it's a new it, round. It, no, it stays. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like all, basically the way I understand that the square tokens stay, mm. um, like especially on us, they stay from round to round, mm. and the circle tokens go away. Okay. Um, okay, so that is hers. Um, I don't want to be. I okay, so I'm gonna spend two. Not two. Um, one. I'm gonna spend one, so one, two, three, four, and then we'll spend another one to do it. Open. The, yep. Blue loot. You find a pile of treasure. Gain ten gold and two random consumables. Hey. Wait, hand me that the the deck of consumables. The deck of consumables. Okay. And ten monies. Yep. And. You just write that down, or yeah, I'll okay. put it in the in the thing. And she does have a vitality juice box. She can only hold three. Uh, Max, Remy can hold two. Well, wait, oh, yeah, she can hold. She, uh, anyone can hold three. Uh, root. Right. Um, and let's see. Oh, 
Well, that might be nice. Uh, okay. She has an abil an, uh, her ability we haven't done yet. Ambitious. Nightingale's commanding personality makes her a natural leader. <laughs> yeah, her commanding personality. <laughs> All right, I got uh, Magic Balm and Bottled Blessing. Hey, those are good ones. Ooh, I'm actually going to use the Magic Balm and get rid of her darkness. Oh, shit, she had darkness? Yeah. I said that. <laughs> Why don't you listen? Ever. I never listen. <laughs> All right. Um... Oh, she can't even do ambitious yet. Uh, but <laughs> oh, I found this in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> just right in my eyes. I, I think it's a little bit of dookie. <laughs> Let me just kind of put, yeah, just put that right in my eyes. Anyway, uh, yeah. So her ambitious will might, might be useful if we try to um, if we, if we try to kill the uh, the the fucking yeah. Earth Loa. Um, but yeah, uh, that blue thing is now gone and. Now it's uh, uh, Rook's turn. Okay. So Rook will get three energy stamina points. He's going to go a uh, one, uh, two, three, four, five. I think that's going to be it. Um, we'll fucking throw some knives at it. Okay. Maybe I can kill it. Uh, I mean... It does have one armor. Well, if I get a seven. Oh, yes, that's right. And I've been rolling so hot. <laughs> well, I might save that reroll. It's once per encounter. Well, here's the one damage on, on that thing. So, nice. You, you're, not, you're not the dexterous type. In fact, I think you kind of hit it in the eye with the handle. Just, yeah. I'm just like, do I reroll? Just to... For efficiency here, because it can only be better. That was the bottom roll. Fuck it. Is that a once per encounter? It is. But then it's gone. It's that thing's gone, and it's not gonna go. I mean, Great. granted, Remy can. Can she even get there? One, two, three, four. Five, oh, she can. All right, fine. <laughs> uh, well, oh, I already spent. Yeah. Uh, this is the one time I get to matter. They're gone. <laughs> I dealt the damage. Yep. Oh, <sighs> Oh, right, he's this thing. Yep, and that's uh That's a three. Yep. That's well they're one and threes on the on the reverse side. Anyway. Yeah. Remy's so turn. That was a comedy of errors. You only ever see Zeke like just grab him from his coat and just quickly he always does it great. Right. So you tried to do the same thing, you thought it was magic. Like uh -huh. they were magic throwing knives, so you just grabbed him and just <laughs> threw it really hard. It hit like like, it, like the side. Just <laughs> All right, so she gains her three point. She totally catches that dagger in midair. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Do that. All right, so she's gonna spend one stamina point to move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She doesn't need to be that close. And you're right. Yes. You remind me. That's what I'm here for, baby. Oh man, here comes the fucking bladed tail, bitches! Hoo That's not bad. Six. Eleven. Eleven! Okay, against that thing. With a defense of eight, so that's three. Four, five damage. Oh, so that's enough. I don't even have to do anything nice. else. Killed it. Flew over it. Nope, it's got one barrier. Oh, it does. Uh, oh, but then I've got Hammer Helm that just gets plus one physical damage. There I do go. finish it off. Now it's dead. And she finds five gold. Hey, money. Up in this shit. Cool. Alright, so these guys are now gone. Ooh. Why do I just have the distinct feeling that this Earth Lois is going to spank our butts? It's gonna be a deal. Alright, well, there's no ally without... Right, she's our main damage source. Keep her in the back <laughs> the and distract is, yeah. her. I mean, she can probably do it uh, with gore, but it's gonna be so slow. Because she can add max. I mean, can't your, your magic staff do magic damage? Um... Like, she can do both, right? One SP before the target of one of your spells makes a conviction check in addition to the effect of the spell deal a white die of magic damage. Yes. She can. Oh yeah, and her her ability, like her attacking the symbols, uh, deal magic damage. Okay. So yeah, yeah. 
she certainly can. Okay, good, anyway, good. So, is there more than one? Nope. Can it move and attack an opponent within reach two? One, two, three, four. No, just... Oh, it has... No, it has movement of... Okay. Yeah, so it's going to move towards the nearest opponent. Okay. Yeah, just just out of reach uh, with with old Remy. Anyway. And uh, so she just moved, and uh, Remy also attacked. So yeah, she just... Yeah. Damn. Those cave sickles, when they roll high, they're uh, they're pretty nasty. Yeah, they fucking ice. They literally the built him to uh, to be able to dodge. Yeah. But unfortunately, he uh, he got ganked. My right. cursed, my huh? cursed rolls. I know, right? I roll for the enemy, and Rook, it's great. Nightingale, the Earth Loa, and then Remy. Okay, let's lead off this little this little gambit here. Oh, so it rolls teals, huh? Yep. He does, he's got, I mean, Rook's the best one to face tank. All right. So we're going to... Oh, so he gets three. So he's he's, he's ready. Yeah. Give me some. Boom. And boom. It's capped out, kids. He's going to spend one. They just get up on it. One, two, three, four. We'll get a little back there, just so everyone can... That uh, creates break attacks. Uh, smoke bomb. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That does not create break attacks. Just <laughs> run through, big guy coming through. And then, well, I'm going to try and, through some act of RN Jesus, <laughs> pierce his five fucking armor. Yep. So I'm attacking with two whites. He has def I mean, he has low What's defense. Okay, eight. so his defense is only eight. Okay, yep. so... That's helpful, and I guess I'm going to empower for free, because I can do that. Okay. Um, okay, here we, here we go. Here we go. That's cocked. Oh, it was even worse. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, what? man. Fuck! God! Well, uh, he, he didn't even break his defense. I, I tripped. I, could, I couldn't see I, the smoke. <laughs> you know, just... You just <laughs> if, if you you think you hit him, but you really just hit the wall yeah. over here. It's sensitive. It's, 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 it's like hitting a base. You know, how you, sometimes you hit the baseball and it's like too close to the handle and it like creates up. Yeah, you're just, that's what happened to you. You're just like ah, God, son of a bitch. I think you peed a little too. No, I kept it inside. He's got <laughs> such a long dick. He has plenty to hold all that all that urine in. <laughs> so thick. <laughs> That's so hot. Yeah. All right. Well, that was Rook's weak ass turn. I, I guess you can attack again. You, that's, you, that you. is true. I could. Um, that's right. That was two to attack. Um, I do kind of want him to focus me, and I might counter. I think I'm gonna save for a counter. Okay. A dodge counter. All right. Nightingale gains her three. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And her goal shot. Um. Okay. Uh, yes. So she's going to spend one, two, move. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to go right here. Yes. Kind of get behind that, that wall. And yeah. Then we will have her use her gore shot. And step. Five. Uh, so 11. Its conviction is two whites. So you can go ahead and roll the two whites. Are you sure? I, I think it's your monster. You're supposed to roll for it. Uh, all right. Nine. Okay. So it fails. I will deal her two damage to deal four damage to this. Hey. That's not nothing. That is not nothing. Um, then I will spend two Boom. to attack with my magic staff. Magic staff! And, ooh, actually, sorry. My, uh, oh. Yeah, uh, yep. I will exhaust and spend an SP to deal a white die of magic damage. Ooh, give me right. another seven! Yeah! Oh, God! God damn! Hell yeah, deal a white die? Yes, yeah, seven. Fucking shit, that hurt. Three. Oh, there's five. How often six. can you do that? I can exhaust it, and, uh... So once a turn? Before the target of one of your spells makes a convention check, in addition to the effect of the spell, deal a white die of magic damage. That's... That's nice. Yeah. Um... So, and then I'll attack. Uh, well, <laughs> ping! Ah! Uh, so it is at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 
So it's just like your Gorshoff went off like a bullet. Just, right, like and then cannon. um, Bottle Blessing. Just blast it off its right shoulder. I will actually it's, yeah. drink the Bottle Blessing when you put that on top to, get, to gain an SP to spend both of them to attack again. Oh, shit. Seven. Still weak as hell. Uh, which one could you reroll? Purple would probably be the best one. Um, and what do you need? Like, and this I, is this is just an attack. So you want to pierce his armor, and then your symbols are going to deal extra that's damage. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of what I was aiming for, but I, I don't think it's worth okay. spending yeah. anything. Okay. Okay. Earth Loa. Um. Is there more than one opponent adjacent? No. Can it move and attack the opponent within reach too? Yes. Uh, move to be within reach of the nearest opponent. Okay. So rook. Yes. Uh, so it doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to move. Yeah. Yep, then he's going to make an attack against a rook. Okay, should he roll? Should he roll? Should he roll? Should he roll? Um, ooh, gross. Nine? Nine? Okay. I think my armor's fucking ten. Uh, defense. Plus something increased my defense. There, yeah, my deflection core. Yeah, I'm at ten. Oh, okay. He didn't break me. Neat. Fucking this game, man, cracks me up. <laughs> it's just, no, it's just like untouchable monsters. Oh, except they're not in any way. <laughs> just, just they're, they're wrong, incredibly, man. incredibly weak. Yeah. Um, well, if we didn't have a mage, I know, but one mage shouldn't be able to just solo gotcha. something that mentions that it's untouchable. Uh, but two cave sickles did drop a character. Yeah, I not. Th We'll talk about it in the discussion gotcha. for sure. Um, yeah, so there's no follow-up because it didn't hit you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, then that's all it does. So, Remy's turn. Remy. Okay. She gets her three back. And she's gonna move. She's gonna move. Right up. Over here. And over here. And then we're gonna do a range to attack. With that sweet bladed tail. Nice. 12. Okay. okay. Yep. Defensive 8. Yep. So, and he's armor 5. Yep. So, I'm just shy of... I'm actually just making his armor and dealing no... Okay, so I'm at 12. That's yep. 4 over. Yep. 4, 5, 6. Okay, so 4 over. So, there's 5. Then six. So okay. So I do one damage, two damage to him. All right. Slip that to a three. Chink. I chink okay. his exoskeleton. All right. <clears throat> he is almost dead. That five, six, seven, uh, ten, thirteen. Thirteen. Uh. All right. Rook. Nightingale, Earth Loa, then Remy. It doesn't matter. Okay. This thing's gonna die. Oh yeah. Cedric goes first. I guess I could have countered last time, but I chose not. I did not. And I will. He'll attack again. He'll empower. And here goes five nine. Hey, we did it. You're up, you're over by one. Over by one. And then I do one two three four. Over by one. That's four extra damage. That's just enough to just make that armor and deal no damage. Hey, at least you made up for your weak-ass attack earlier. Yeah. All right, so Nightingale's turn. Gore shot. Spell Boom. six. Eleven. It was... It's uh, two white. Oh, two white. Yep. Oh, well, that is very much a 13. <laughs> um... If I had, oh, if I had the, when determine the force of a spell, I may discard any amount. Okay, uh, you, when you fail to affect a target with a spell. Okay, I guess since I didn't do that, I will have to. I'll add an energy token to this because I didn't hit him with that gore shot. So, oh, I guess I gained my my three. One, two, three. You know, I just realized hmm. I would have had to. Uh, I couldn't have attacked him anyway with the magic staff because I'm not anywhere near him. Oh, gotcha. Uh, I mean, I missed anyway. So. Yeah. So that is her turn. Oh. Yeah, because I missed, and okay. basically, if she misses, uh, 
She's that she's kind of useless. Gotcha. All right. Well, the Earth Loa is there more than one opponent adjacent? No. Um. So can it move an attack an opponent within reach too? Yep. So it'll attack Rook. Bring it, bitch. Ten. That's just my armor. All I right. will dodge. Okay. Oh well then. All right. Then oh, failed no, to you dodge failed. completely. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Uh, I mean, it's gonna do to one point of damage. Ow. Oh shit. My, my thing got knocked off. I think it was a thirteen. Yeah. Um, okay. One point of damage. Yep. How do you counter? Do you have to take no damage? Uh, when you counter, where is that? When attack deals no final damage. No final damage. Gotcha. Oh, I can also. That's the oh, so that's the only time I can counter. Yes. Okay. Um. Anyway, but it does have a follow up. So reach to follow up push. Two. Oh right, I have a uh, oh, shit ton of armor myself. So it did not pierce. It my... still gets to do a follow up though. Okay, that's fine. Which will push you too. Oh. And it'll inflict paralyze. <gasps> so you have to meet a force of eleven. So whatever your conviction is. So I get upgraded to a white. So I get like a white and a purple. Yep. Um, actually, I choose to succeed. Oh, you can just do that? Yeah, I have to flip it, but I just choose to succeed. Okay. okay. All right. Remy's turn. <laughs> All righty, then. Get three. I swear, this tutorial... This this still better be the tutorial. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like, oh, let's just say we killed him instead of wasting everyone's time. <laughs> All right, another ranged attack. I guess I'll just empower because it's a good time. Just really rearing back. Hey, yeah, that's a big hit. A max. Almost. All right, so that puts us 15. at 15. You so we're already... Seven over. Seven over. That's already two damage. He's dead. Yes. <laughs> okay. He's very dead. She just bisect his little bitch punk ass. Eight. Eight. Oh, no, sorry, he's not. He has five armor. Oh, okay. So, 15, so it's already... Yeah. So he's, he's eight. So, so seven. seven so I'm, so I'm doing two damage. Yep. Not including symbols. So then two, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage. Eight damage? Yeah. Oh, then yeah, he's still dead. Cool. Okay. Untouchable, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, hey, yay! Not quite unkillable. Um, I don't think we get anything except we just get um, if the oh if the Earth Loa is defeated, read the following hidden text. Mm -hmm. Woo. Mm -hmm. The Earth Loa crumbles before your might. Gain one random mundane relic. Ooh, mundane That's relic. Not quite. Not quite unkillable. Okay. Uh, mundane relic. That's what these are, because it's not unique. So that's what I thought it was. All right, so she's going to gain... All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. And number one through six. Five. All right. She finds that. Oh, one, one thing she already literally has. Oh, man. Well, I can hand off someone else. When can we do that at the rest period? Uh, yeah, whenever it says we can rest. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, that was Remy's turn. Earthlow is now dead. Oh, we can have three relics. Can we? Yeah, we have three slots. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So you can have multiples? As far as I know. Cool. Okay, so now just one of us needs to make it to the exit. All right, Remy is going to be the one to do that, so go ahead and just... Yep, so three, that we'll do a... Seven, you can boost it Good. But with one. All right, Two. so you made it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, each party member gains one XP, then restore adventurers. Hey, we're freshened up. 20. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, we gain one XP. Oh, okay. So that puts... Um. Woo! 15. So, 4, 4, 4. So that restores everyone completely, right? Yes, I believe just everything is yep. refreshed. Alright, so 4. So he's at 16. He actually doesn't have that much health anyway. Well, I guess 16 is quite a bit. So 16, he's back. Yay! Hooray! Put him there. 
Um, and then, yeah, so she's back. And she has 17. Yeah, 17. All right, we all have 4 XP. Nice. Which is not horrible. Then we continue to getting, getting penisy. Getting penisy. Okay, getting cocky. I told you guys we were ready for this. Nightingale pushed aside the last of the monstrous remains. The sound of strange footfalls now moved away from them. We're like the best team ever. Pretty sure that deserves a round of high fives. Nobody mocked her enthusiasm this time. Expressions of satisfaction and pride were universal. Even Rook looked proud. I guess you were right, Nightingale. This wasn't such a bad idea right. after all. <laughs> Remy returned Nightingale's grin. We're gonna be heroes. Not you, you trash peasant. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Continue to a strange pedestal. So there's the art for that one. Uh, isn't that that's that that's very much some KDM shit. God damn. Like yeah. if I could if I could pick one piece of art out of this whole book, that'd be it. Alright, a strange pedestal. Oh, this is a long one. A strange Two pedestal. hours. No. <laughs> it's Dragon Gill gingerly picked her way through the hall, being careful not to make a sound. A pair of massive double doors blocked the way. Made of wood so old it seemed halfway petrified. Someone was shouting from within. Nightingale felt lucky that the intruder was making enough of a racket to find in the dim light. Nightingale was certain it was the thief. Who else would be down in the vaults? She peeked through the partly open double doors and leaned around the edge of the doorway so she wouldn't alert the thief to her presence. Upon seeing what was in the room, Nightingale immediately froze. Huh? She fought back the urge to scream, which turned halfway into a gag as she stared at the abomination that filled the center of the room. It looked like a head 30 feet tall with skin rotting and pale. Strands of matted, oily hair clung to its clammy flesh, and grasping limbs sprouted from random points along the scalp. They were like dozens of thick arms and fingers that writhed like a centipede that had been cut in half with a shovel. The room was large and mostly devoid of furnishings, except for some sort of pedestal that sat on the far side of the grotesque monstrosity. I have the right of salvage. A man stood with his back to her, separating her from the monster. Nightingale mused that this must be the thief. He was attempting to claim whatever was on the pedestal behind the horrible creature. He sounded far more confident than she would have been. <clears throat> you can't stop me. The creature laughed, throwing back a jaw that hinged open to reveal more appendages. Every pale digit had become a of glittering teeth. It wasn't laughter as ever Nightingale had known it before. It was like the last breath of the dying. Shifted <coughs> octaves lower and much louder. I am Hagrafar, Lord of the Vaults. I have right to every treasure here. Not this one, the thief said, stepping forward. Curiosity fought against her fear, and Nightingale moved closer to get a better look at what the thief was trying to steal. Atop the pedestal, she could see a rather benign-looking shard of rock. Its faint glow reflected a red hue from the cushion it was on. It looked as if it was placed deliberately, but by whom she didn't know. You have no use for such an artifact, the thief started yelling now. Let me pass and I'll make it worth your while. The creature hographer furred its obscene brow as if contemplating the offer. Then something tumbled across the ground. Nightingale accidentally kicked a stone across the floor Oops. and the creature looked in her direction. Its single gigantic eye fixing on her. <laughs> Her heart seized in her chest as the monster's apparent amusement turned to anger. Coward. You can face me alone. This thief is less than a worm. It raised one of its massive tooth-filled mouths at the end of an elongated finger as thick as Rook's torso. Nightingale tensed. Get back! Her shout came too late. There was a harsh tearing sound like she might have heard in a butcher's shop as Hographer ripped open the man's belly. <gasps> Blood sprayed through the air with an audible gurgle. The thief fell. No! Her body moved on instinct, and before she knew what was happening, she was sprinting towards his limp figure. Get away from him! Her friends jumped into action as well. She felt a surge of pride filling her, knowing that she hadn't been abandoned. The monster swept aside their blows like it might an annoying insect. Their attacks slid like water from its hide without effect. Rook went slamming backward as a massive finger knocked the air from his lungs and sent him tripping over himself. Remy and Zeke weren't far behind each sent flying with casual ease. Nightingale charged, leaping with her weapon outstretched, but it caught her in midair with a swipe, smacking her across the middle and tossing her through the air like a child's toy. You know what this reminds me of? Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen Demon Slayer, right? 
that first demon he fought during the trials that had like the hands and it had like it covered its neck with like all the all the all the limbs. It's like at the very beginning. Was that Demon Slayer? That was Demon Slayer. Oh, when he was like doing the test. And yeah. It was, like a, and it was like the demon that killed all those guys' pupils. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's okay. kind of what, what, what I'm envisioning. Toy. She was only dimly aware of striking the ground. Her weapon was sent spinning out of her grip as she slid to a stop. Behind her, the sound of cruel laughter echoed through the chamber. Nightingale didn't lie still for very long. She felt her tail twitch, her limbs spasming one at a time as she regained control. Gurgling breaths came from somewhere so close she could almost feel the heat. Nightingale fought the pain, forcing herself to sit up. The world was still spinning, but it was clear enough to see what had happened. The monstrous hographer had knocked her towards the injured thief. There was more blood than Nightingale had ever seen in her life. It pulled on the ground around him. The torn threads of his shirt mixed freely with the wound. For a moment, time stood still as she tried to process the image. She crawled weakly forward along the ground, reaching the thief. I'm coming! Ew! <laughs> a voice coming out in a slur. She clawed her way through the grime, fumbling through her gear with one shaking hand. Damn you! Get away from me! <laughs> this is your he coughed, fault, bitch. Blood pouring from his lips as he tried to shove her vainly away with one hand. Get away! Nightingale ignored him. The man was obviously in shock. He didn't know what he was saying and there was no chance she would listen. I'll stop the bleeding or something. She searched desperately for the source of the blood pooling from his wound. She pushed but couldn't manage enough pressure to do anything but cover her hands in warm, thick fluid. The man's skin was pale, his insides open and exposed. Every second brought another pulse of blood, some splattering on her bare skin. Get, get away. The man's breathing was slowing to a dull rattle. He pushed on one of her legs, but the gesture was as futile as her attempt to stem the blood. Here, Phoenix. I'll down. help you! She insisted again, <laughs> leaning closer. There was probably healing magic for a wound this terrible. Magic that someone who'd actually earned a spot in the Demiurge would know. Malu. The word came out in a hoarse rattle, bubbles foaming at the thief's mouth as he gasped. He suddenly shook one last time, then finally fell still. Nightingale watched him die. There was a moment of silence. She didn't notice that her friends were still stunned from their blows. She didn't think about the horrible monster behind her. Nothing made sense as she stared down at the body. Then something started to hiss and bubble in front of her. It's like she's been sheltered her entire life so she doesn't understand the concept of death. It's like, Wait, what? Why, yeah, why, why is he sleeping? <laughs> this is no time to rest. <laughs> and they're just like, are you serious? Do you not know what death is? Like, no, see, no, oh, see, I, I, I see what, no, but sometimes when people fight me, they get really tired, so they have to take a nap afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. The corpse wasn't still. Something darker than blood seemed to be leaking from his face. Nightingale pushed away from him, blood still coating her arms and soaking into her clothes. A few moments proved the tar-like ooze was not leaking. It was clawing its way out, pouring out of the man's mouth and piling up atop him. It surged from behind his eyes, out his ears, and out the pores in his skin. Mm. She only had a second to see it. The black mass sloshed about within itself, and with each movement, strange lights flickered from within. It had dozens of eyes, no two alike in size or shape. They seemed to move freely, One lazy. pointing directly at objects instead of pivoting to face them. Within a second, they were all pointing at her. Nightingale tried to scream as the thing surged towards her. She put her arms up, but it didn't hinder the ooze at all. It had no limbs, yet the whole thing latched onto her face like the malicious pseudopod of a feeding amoeba. Fierce cold boiled at her skin where it touched. So cold it burned. Her scream choked in her throat as the monster pried her jaws open wider, filling her mouth. The seeping tar sucked into her eyes and she could feel the pressure of it pushing into her skull. The pain was overwhelming, screaming throughout her body. The darkness hmm. consumed her vision and her porn. mind until <laughs> consciousness faded. Rook moaned. Despite the pain making every movement stiff, he knew he had to act. The creature was still here, and it could easily kill him. He had to get up. He had to help his friends. He rose grunting. In the darkness, his surroundings seemed to blur. So this kind of jumped pretty quick. There is like a, a line break. So like it... it 
when stuff like that happens, it transitions. So now it's from Rook's point of view. Mm-hmm. But uh, she she basically immediately just continued. Yet one shape formed before the others. It was Hographer, looming in the murky shadows. Far worse, it was holding Nightingale in the air by one of her horns. Rook couldn't speak, instead fumbling for his weapon. He didn't dare do anything sudden, lest he startle the monster into killing his friend. Hographer held Nightingale very near between two grotesque fingers, it's inspecting her closely. Mm-hmm. Where did you go? Acquired a new host? Perhaps trying to hide inside of another body? It was searching Nightingale's face with a massive eye. Rook tensed, readying for a vain attempt at an attack. After a few seconds, the monster started laughing again, and Nightingale shook vigorously in its grasp. Damned fool, Hographer called, voice so loud that the ground seemed to shake. She just saved my life from that parasite. Hographer seemed to be smiling through the appendages leaking from its mouth. Rook had no time for rational thought. He charged, crossing the room far faster than his size made him look capable of, lifting a massive weapon in both hands. Hographer didn't see him coming, nor did it turn towards the sound of Rook's pounding steps. Rook struck as hard as he could, aiming straight for the joint on one of the creature's fingers. The half-rotten flesh parted, spraying foul-smelling slime. Hographer screamed, its voice sounding continually shriller as it went. Nightingale landed with a sick-sounding thump at Rook's feet. Rook didn't slow as he scooped her into his arms, leaning towards the smallest, shortest door in the room. Follow me, Rook bellowed towards Zeke and Remy. <laughs> it's like Despite way too small for a huge beating, skirt, and she's she like at him shaped all as he blows him. through the doorway. Oh, like cartoon <laughs> style. Yeah, yeah. Rook couldn't have said where he went. <laughs> At each fork and junction, he picked a direction at random, so long as the way through looked clear. The ground shook behind them, and Hographer's terrible screeching still sounded in his ears. Rook ran until his gut started to ache, oblivious to anything but the placement of his feet and Nightingale in his arms. The sound of pursuit faded to a distant echo, and only then they could stop. Rook dropped to his knees, lowering Nightingale to the ground in front of him. Zeke was first to speak. His voice so casual and sounded cigarette. <laughs> Who is this? Did either of you catch the way we came? I... No? Remy dropped to the ground beside Rook, nudging at Nightingale's cheek with one hand. To Rook's great surprise, Nightingale started coughing. She whimpered like an injured animal. Her eyes opened, and for a quick instant they seemed cloudy. What... happened? She moaned. She multiclassed into Warlock. Are you alright? <laughs> Rook asked, his voice low. Are you kidding? Nightingale shook her head once as though trying to shake water out of her ears. What the hell was on that pedestal that was worth fighting a monster like that? And what was that horrific dark creature that came out of the dead thief? Everyone gave her a strange look before Rick asked. (laughs) Something came out of the thief? What do you mean something came out of the thief? I only saw the giant head hographer. Nightingale shook her head trying to remember, but it was all a blur. Oh God, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, we have bigger problems to worry about now. Zeke gestured around the little room. Some kind of old storage area off the main hall by the look of it. We're lost. I was trying to keep track of where we went, but I don't have a goddamn <clears throat> clue anymore. That thing... We get it, Remy swear. sighed. This place goes down as deep as the towers go high. That's what they say. Thousands and thousands of rooms, and at least one of them has a gigantic monster that's probably looking for us right now. Zeke offered Nightingale his hand and helped her stand. She swayed on her feet, but only a little. You've got any smart ideas, Rook? Zeke pulled what looked like his last crumpled cigarette out. Rook sighed. I've got one idea, but you guys have to be cool about it. Nobody freak out. Nobody freak out? Nightingale still looked drained, but there were a few bright twinges around her cheeks. You serious, Rook? After meeting... What did it call itself? Hographer? Okay, right. He reached up to his neck and removed the amulet that hung there. <gasps> Surrey? He didn't say it so much as he thought it, calling out through the strange amulet with focused will to a place he never should have touched. Yes, Rook? As usual, the answering voice came almost instantly. Yes, Daddy? <laughs> created from nothing, yet audible by everyone you nearby. <laughs> you sound upset. I am, Rook said to the empty air all around them. <clears throat> Do you have the strength to manifest now? The reply came with a little reproach. <laughs> there are three others in the room with you. 
When we first spoke, I told you my kind was forbidden in your world and both of us would be in great danger if your kind learned of our friendship. <gasps> Rook glanced once at each of his friends in turn, Nightingale still looking like she'd been wrung out, Zeke forcing himself to be calm, and Remy was shaking with nervous fear. He sighed. I trust them, Surrey. We need your help. As you wish. Light began to glow from the amulet a magenta that overwhelmed the gloom and grew bright enough to radiate through the open doorways around them. Rook was numb to the wonder by now, though he couldn't miss the shocked expressions his friends had as the light grew so bright it seemed to take solid form. Rook knew little of Surrey. Every time they'd been together, she had taken this shape, greenish and vaguely human, with a body of radiant energy that blurred into swirling light the lower you looked. Her hair was electric blue and waved as though in an invisible wind. Whoa! Zeke's cigarette hung limply from his mouth as his eyes widened. Hi! Your tits are out. <laughs> Surrey bounced on nothing, though she never got more than a few feet from Rook. The amulet continued to glow, though it had dimmed down to something far more tolerable. Everybody, this is Surrey. Rook waved towards My his girlfriend. friends as he introduced them. My the spirit darted friend. a little nearer to each one as he named them, examining each from head to foot. She didn't offer to shake hands or anything else similarly polite. How did... Rook cut Zeke off with a tired gesture. Later, he turned, fixing his eyes on the glowing spirit. <clears throat> Surrey, we're completely lost down here. Can you help us find a way out? Remy gasped as Surrey vanished. Did she just leave us? She said with a concerned look. Rook shook his head. It's complicated to explain. If she left us, the amulet wouldn't be glowing. Before he could explain further, Surrey returned in a bright flash of purple light. I found the way, Surrey grinned, pointing with one hand at a nearby open door. A glowing trail formed in that direction. Best get moving. Alrighty. Yep, so we go to a way out next, but I think... Show us the way. <laughs> Show me the way. Uh, so that will be that for... Midara, uh, Unintentional uh, Malum Act 1, uh, well, at least for this part. Uh, let's see, we've done quite a few. I think it's time for a discussion. A discussion. So click the I to go to the discussion for Midara. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful weather time of day this for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.